How to Stop Worrying and Start Living Summary and Review Original Songwriter, Dale Carnegie Year of Publication, 1948 Number of Pages, 208 Genre, Self-Help how to Avoid Worries and Start Living by Dale Carnegie is a self-help book first published in 1948. The book is divided into 20 chapters, each of which addresses a different aspect of concern. Review Dale Carnegie is one of the world's most influential self-help authors. His books, such as How to Make Friends and Influence People, are classics of the genre and have sold millions of copies worldwide. In How to Avoid Worries and Start Living, Carnegie addresses the issue of concern comprehensively and insightfully. It provides readers with a variety of tools and techniques to address concerns and live a fuller and more fulfilling life. The book is well written and informative. Carnegie presents his ideas clearly and concisely, and provides examples of how they can be applied in real life. Some of the key points Carnegie makes in the book include Worry is a choice. No one has to worry. Dale Carnegie opens in a new window. www.britannica.com Dale Carnegie Worries are usually based on fears and expectations. Worries can be debilitating and lead to physical and mental health problems. There are ways to deal with worries and live a fuller life. Carnegie provides readers with a variety of tools and techniques to address concerns, including the what's the worst that can happen, the technique of self-discipline, the technique of action, the technique of attitude, the technique of appreciation. Carnegie also discusses the importance of surrounding yourself with positive people and having a strong sense of purpose. Concluding how to Avoid Worries and Start Living is an important and useful book. It can help readers deal with concerns and live a fuller and more fulfilling life. Here are some tips to make the most of reading How to Avoid Worries and Start Living. Read the book with an open mind. Don't discard the ideas presented in the book just because they are different from your own way of thinking. Reflect on the ideas presented in the book. Think about how you can apply these ideas in your own life. Try the techniques and tools presented in the book. Don't be afraid to experiment with different techniques to see what works best for you. If you are looking for a way to deal with worries and live a fuller life, How to Avoid Worries and Start Living is a book you should read. I hope you enjoyed this review of How to Avoid Worries and Start Living. If you liked it, please leave your like and comment what you thought. Your support is important to me. If you think this review can be useful to others, share it with your friends and family. Together, we can create a more worry-free world. Here are some ideas for comments you can leave. What are the most important ideas you learned from the book? How are you applying the book's ideas in your own life? What is your opinion about the techniques and tools presented in the book? Thank you for reading. Here are some of the most useful techniques and tools presented in the book. The what's the worst that can happen? This technique is simple but effective. When you're worrying about something, ask yourself, what worse can happen? Once you know what the worst case scenario is, you can start planning how to deal with it. The technique of self-discipline. Worries are often caused by our own thoughts and fears. Self-discipline is the ability to control our thoughts and emotions. When you're worrying about something, practice self-discipline and try to focus on other things. The Technique of Action Sometimes the best way to deal with concerns is to take action. If you're worried about something, do what you can to solve it. Summary How to Stop Worrying and Start Living is a self-help book written by Dale Carnegie, first published in 1948. The book is divided into 20 chapters, each of which addresses a different aspect of concern. One way to practice self-discipline is to use positive affirmations. For example, if you are concerned about giving a presentation, you could say to yourself, I am well prepared for this presentation, and I will do very well. Another way to practice self-discipline is to meditate. 
If you know what the worst case scenario is, you can start planning how to deal with it. For example, let's say you're worried about giving a presentation at work. You might think, what worse can happen? I could forget what I'm supposed to say, and everyone will laugh at me. Once you've identified the worst case scenario, you can start thinking about how to prevent it from happening. For example, you could practice your presentation several times, or you could bring notes with you to the presentation. Even if the worst case scenario happens, it's important to remember that it's not the end of the world. Everyone makes mistakes, and most people will be understanding. The Technique of Self-Discipline Worries are often caused by our own thoughts and fears. Self-discipline is the ability to control our thoughts and emotions. When you're worrying about something, practice self-discipline and try to focus on other things. One way to practice self-discipline is to use positive affirmations. For example, if you are concerned about giving a presentation, you could say to yourself, I am well prepared for this presentation, and I will do very well. Another way to practice self-discipline is to meditate. The To avoid worrying about the action of others, do not expect gratitude for your kindness, do not hold grudges, put a limit on your concerns, and understand that others may be criticizing just because they are envious of your success. After all, no one kicks a dead dog. Learn to rest before getting worn out and start focusing on the positive aspects of life.